legs. If I said the Warriors are going to be one and done, is that fact or fiction? That's fiction. I believe they get this win tonight. Look, they're playing probably their most consistent stretch rolling into this situation. So it's good timing for them. They've actually got multiple guys playing well offensively at the same time for almost the first time all season. I think ultimately Steph Curry is the difference and they get this win on the road. Meanwhile, Windy, the Lakers, a year ago they made a run to the Western Conference Finals. If I said they can do that again, is that fact or fiction? I'm saying fact and you're going to accuse me of talking out of both sides of my mouth and that's fair because I don't think that they would be favored over the Nuggets. But what I, what, the point I want to make is that there isn't really going to be upsets in the Western Conference. All of these teams, 1 through 10, are very, very formidable teams, including the Lakers and including the Warriors, who are very strong 10 seed. All right, I'm going to come back to them in a minute. Legs, if I said this is LeBron's last best chance to win a title with the Lakers, would that be fact? That is a fact, and it has very little to do actually with LeBron James and Anthony Davis. It has more to do with who, who's in the Western Conference and the growth of these teams. When you look at a Dallas, you look at an Oklahoma City, you look at a Minnesota, all of those teams have superstars. Some have multiple superstars. They're significantly younger. Those teams are coming. And by the way, I didn't even mention the Denver Nuggets. So for the Lakers, yes, this is their last best shot. Okay, fair enough. So let's talk about what is actually at stake tonight and what the Lakers would actually be best off seeing happen. Everyone yelled at me yesterday, but that is because, like most geniuses, I will not be fully appreciated until long after my time. Cindy, if you would, the graphic. The last eight times the Lakers have played the Nuggets, they have lost all eight of them. Four of those were in the Western Conference Finals last year. Four of the eight were by double digits. The Nuggets never lose at home. They dominated the entire NBA postseason last year. I would add to that that if the Lakers play the Thunder in the first round, meaning they're the eighth seed and play the one, they went 3-1 and one against OKC this year. And the Thunder are the second youngest team in the entire NBA this season. So, if one were to say it would better serve the Lakers to lose tonight, take their chances Friday night at becoming the eighth seed and taking on OKC instead of Denver, would one be right? You would be right. It's definitely a better path for them, clearly, to play the Oklahoma City Thunder rather than the Denver Nuggets. But to intentionally orchestrate that, I don't think that's a good idea, Granny, because I think you leave yourself then open to the possibility of losing the next game, which is possible. If mm -hmm. Golden State wins, you got to play the Warriors, who have played very well against the Lakers this year. They have, so Lakers the Lakers not be able to slow them down. True. So the Kings. Both of those teams. I understand that. You okay. now go home, and you're saying, oh, what difference does it make? You go home after playing two games as opposed to playing maybe four or five against the Nuggets. That's really what you're saying. Yes, here. I am. I just don't think I'm it's... saying the objective is not to get into the playoffs. Yep. It is to win the championship or make as deep a run as you possibly can. I'm not sure I understand the logic behind saying, yes, they'd be better off if they lose, but they should not do that on purpose. Those, those two things don't necessarily go together. I understand that there is something ethical, uh, massively wrong with the idea of purposely losing a game of this magnitude. I am simply saying there's no question it better suits them long term to lose tonight than to win. You're talking about a guy with the psyche of LeBron James, with the career that LeBron James has had ducking an opponent intentionally. As opposed, and what, what I mean by that is, not putting yourself in a position where anything could happen in a one-game situation, right? Foul trouble, somebody rolls an ankle, Anthony Davis goes out of a game, which happens quite often, and now you lose that nine to the winner of the 9-10, and you're going home rather than take your chances with LeBron James and Anthony Davis against the Denver Nuggets, catching them early in the playoffs. I, I just don't think LeBron James would have the mentality, let's intentionally throw this game or not play, whatever it may be, to guarantee we don't have to play Denver. Logically, you can make a strategic point about why losing this game would make some sense. But I think practically it's not something that the Lakers would do. Number one, what's the most important thing for the Lakers? doesn't matter who they're playing. The most important thing is health of LeBron and Anthony Davis. They win tonight. They get three days off. Plus, I think beating Denver is a tall order. I don't think the Lakers would probably be able to do it, whether it's now or within a month. But if you're going to play the Nuggets, historically, they do play their sort of lesser basketball in the playoffs early. You catch them later in the playoffs, I think you've got less of, a, less of a chance. You catch them, especially if you're in a little bit more of a rhythm, you might have a chance to steal a game in Denver in game one or two. I think the Lakers go all out tonight. They have a good track record in high-stakes games against the Pelicans this year. They have a good game plan. They've been able to stay there. I think it's all set up for them to take care of business. Play-in game tonight. Sacramento and Golden State. The Warriors have won 10 of their last 12 after an inconsistent season that raised questions about their future. Steph Curry was asked about that yesterday. 
be pretty obvious it'd be a disappointment if we're not in a uh, a playoff series and have an opportunity to compete at that level. You can make up whatever narrative that would bring up, but right now I think it would rob the opportunity we have this week and hopefully going into a playoff series to give ourselves a chance. And I think it's it's important that uh, we stay in that in that mentality. Don't worry, worry about anything else. Look, we've been talking all season long about could this be the last dance for the Warriors? If it doesn't end well, if they don't make a deep run, whatever happens, the day has arrived, people. If they lose tonight, their season is over. Wendy, are we living in a world where tonight could be the last time Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, and Draymond Green play together? No. I think they like the way this team finished the season. 27-12 and 12 down the stretch. Top 10 offense, top 10 defense. They are a quality team. They're going to have to reduce their payroll, Greeny. They're spending almost $400 million. Clay Thompson is making $43 million this year. He will not make that from anybody next year, and certainly not the Warriors. He's going to have to take a 10-figure cut, not 10-figure, uh, eight-figure cut um, to come down. Mm -hmm. And Chris Paul has an option, a team option, for $31 million. They're not picking that up. They, I am not say he wouldn't stay there, but they're not picking that up. So they're going to reduce their payroll by tens of millions of dollars, make some changes on the edges. But I think they bring Clay Thompson back. I think they like the way this team plays at the end of the season. As you see tonight, despite being on the road, they are a favorite. They did beat Sacramento in what was a really, really exciting first-round series last year. Do you expect them to win tonight? Do you expect when the playoffs, the playoffs themselves, not the play-in, but the playoffs begin next weekend for Golden State to be in them? I think you're going to have a hard time winning two straight road games to get in. And that's ultimately what it's going to take. And whether it's New Orleans or the Lakers going on the road winning one of those two games, I think that's going to be just a tall order. I do think they, they take care of Sacramento. And I'm not saying that's a given either. Like, you're playing the Kings, a pretty good team, in their building, right? And they're very good there. And they, you have two tough guys to guard, but I think they do a good job on Sabonis. They did a great job on him last year in the playoffs. I think Draymond Green does a really good job guarding him, and I think Steph Curry's the difference maker. I think they win a game, winning two straight road games to find your way into the playoffs. I think it's a tall order, which means for the first time, really interesting conversations take place around this roster. I agree with Wendy, though. It's a lot easier said than done because you still have Steph Curry at a high level, like a championship caliber level you now have to reload around him to stay relevant. You owe it to Steph Curry. How do you do that by moving these pieces, these veteran guys? So I think the core comes back. They did finish on a high note, regardless of how this goes over the next two games. They bring the main core back, and then you've got to do some things to improve the edges of that roster and improve your rotation through nine. You can't help but think how close bunched every team in this Western Conference playoff picture was and think about all those games that Draymond Green missed and, and you say to you, if he was there, would they be the 7-8 game now? Might they be the 6 seed right now? Instead, they're facing two straight elimination games on the road. We'll see what winds up happening. Do this thing in this moment in which we live. Let's start with Golden State. Golden State finished this season 27-12. and 12. This is not a 10 seed. You want to call them a 10 seed? Fine. They are much better than that. They were After the All-Star break, they were top 10 in offense and top 10 in defense. They have played uh, the, the Sacramento Kings very tight all season long. They have a good game plan that they had from last season against Sabonis in the postseason. Um, look, you want to you know, disregard this team and say that they had a failed season, I wish you the best of luck. Um, the Los Angeles, uh, or the, it, Joel Embiid uh, is not going to be on the injury report. He is uh, set to go to tomorrow's. Um, play-in game against the Miami Heat. He did skip Sunday's game after tweaking that surgically repaired knee on Friday, but expect him to be ready to go. And look, Philly finished the season very strong. Again, this is a seven seed in name only. This is not really a seven seed when Embiid is healthy. That's we're going to be a continuing theme throughout this postseason. And another team that sets up for the Los Angeles Lakers. Again, you want to call them an eight seed? Enjoy your time. This team went 13-5 and five down the stretch of the season. They were very strong offensively after the All-Star break. LeBron just had the best three-point shooting season of his career, and they have a very good game plan against the Pelicans. We saw it in the in-season tournament. We saw it Sunday. They didn't have to travel. The Lakers are set up for this game. The Pelicans have a lot to answer for, especially dealing with the um, with the, you know, the, the struggles the last few times they played. All right, so, so that's the situation, and it sets up. And, boy, it couldn't have looked worse for Embiid, by the way. I mean, you could just hope that that guy, one way or another, whoever you're rooting for, let, let him be healthy and let's see what he can do. But let's focus in on the Lakers for a minute here, okay? So yeah. I, I made a little bit of a stir yesterday when I just pointed out the obvious. 
Someone needs to do that. Someone needs to be willing to say aloud, the Lakers would be way better off losing Tuesday night than winning. And you ask, well, why would that be, Greeny? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let me show you what the Denver Nuggets have done to the Lakers the last eight times they have played them. They've beaten them all eight. Four of those were in the playoffs. Four of those were by double digits. The Nuggets were 10-1 and one at home in the playoffs last year. They were an unstoppable machine through the postseason, including running right through the Lakers. If the Lakers win tonight, that's their first round opponent. Their season comes to an immediate end. Should the Lakers lose tonight but win on Friday, which I know is not a guarantee, but should they do that, then they would get Oklahoma City, the youngest ever one seed ever, the second youngest team in the NBA this year, and a team the Lakers beat three out of four this season. So you tell me how it does not better serve the Lakers to lose tonight's game. Well, you can only say they're better off if you're willing to go ahead and make the leap that they win that next game against the winner of the 9-10. Right? That, that's the only way you could guarantee they're better off. Right? You don't know that they're going to win that game because they're going to play. If that were the case, either the Warriors or the Kings, the Warriors certainly have put up big numbers against the Lakers. They have not been able to slow them down this season. The Kings have played well against them also. So there's a potential that, yeah, okay, you lose the game, and then you lose another game, and now you don't even get to participate in the best of seven. So that's the leap you have to make. And if you're willing to make that leap, clearly you'd rather play the Thunder than the Nuggets. Every team in the West would make that argument. There are no perfect scenarios here, obviously. But let me just ask you the following question, because so many people have said that to me. If you're the Lakers and you're playing the percentages, which do they have a better chance of doing? Beating either Golden State or Sacramento in one game at home or beating the Nuggets in a best of seven. Well, clearly beating the Kings. So there you go. The Warriors at home. Well, this is what I'm saying. So I mean, all the, it just makes sense. I understand it flies in the face of competition. It flies yes. in the face of ethics. It flies in the face of what the league would want. And I'm not suggesting they're going to do it. And who LeBron James is, I think all also of those his things. psyche it flies in the face of that. Yeah, as but well. he, you know what he also is? He's a very pragmatic and intelligent person. He understands if his goal is to win the championship. Down deep in his soul, he knows he's way better off against well, Oklahoma is, City than Denver. We're all going to be watching. Is there going to be a back spasm, a migraine, some bad gumbo somebody ate? Like, <laughs> you know, there's no telling what could have happened. There